Welcome back to another great edition of Rake Your Position, where four lifelong friends are living out their dream from the comfort of their chairs. I am Aaron, the host. I am Joe, the groundskeeper. Bow, 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 bow. Hmm. Wild thing. Is that what that was? I, I believe so. I am Jay Lee, the rover. Insert funny pun here. And I'm Johnny Cash. <laughs> yeah, there it is. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> We're still having a little technical difficulties there with Joe. He's the groundskeeper is lagging, so Damn, if he sounds bad? funny. It's just dude. It. But that's all right. We uh, we will march that. on. Nothing can hold yeah, the pod back. It'll probably get better as we go along, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First of all, our IT all department's righties. on it. Yeah, that's right. So we're jumping right into the rankings. Uh for like third or fourth week in a row now, these teams are going to sound pretty familiar, but we got a little different order, and somebody else got some votes. So let's look right at it here. So falling down to fifth place this week is the Rangers. Moving up to fourth is the Rays. The Ra- Rangers had five total points. They got – no, they had six total points. Excuse me. Four total points. Golly, guys, why am I still doing this? <laughs> <laughs> whatever the Rangers Rangers or Rays are at the bottom uh, both falling drastically but the Dodgers have risen to the three spot with Baltimore and Atlanta holding tight to the first and second spots pretty strongly but the Dodgers are are catching ground it seems like each week they they're slowly moving up the rankings um, the other team that got some votes and I know I voted for him I didn't see who else voted for him I gotta gotta guess but I wonder who Seattle got two votes this week in the five spots. Who else voted for Seattle? Hmm. <laughs> I'm guessing it's, it's the guy it's wearing me. the Seattle stuff. Aud- yeah, me. audio viewers. There's Jared, I wearing... love the vote. Tell me why you voted him there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I went against my normal logic for this because I tried to take notes from last week. But if we go off of like how Corey votes, it's they're the hottest team in baseball, so I could not vote for them. <laughs> And J-Rod, baby. J-Rod's I did vote for the Rays again this week. boy. Yeah, Seattle uh, yeah. got two fists, and the Rays got two fists, and the Rays also got a fourth. So, but, The uh, uh, Mariners are definitely making it interesting, which you love to see it. Yeah, they're the hottest team in baseball, let alone the West right now. Six-game winning streak as of uh, Sunday night. After the weekend game is over, they made up three games on Texas and Houston. Also, they just swept Houston, so that's nice. Their run differentials catching up to everybody except for the top couple teams. Um, everything's trending in the right direction. And so, yeah, if you look at that fifth fifth spot, there's a lot of teams. Houston, Texas, San Fran probably, um, and, of course, Seattle. So, why not? Cubs. I like it, Jared. Um and barring anything Cubs. crazy, Cubs. I think they're yeah. gonna I think they're gonna make it seven in a row tonight. Are they're they winning right cool. now? Who are they playing this week? Uh, they are playing the White Sox. So I mean, uh, okay, so yeah, they got a chance to get to double digits here in a win streak. I was just looking at the records too when I was voting. I had Seattle Rangers, Astros, and Rays. Looking at my fourth and fifth spots in the last twenty games, Seattle's fourteen and four. I guess it's eighteen games technically. A couple of days off. Rangers twelve and six, Astros ten and eight, Rays ten and seven. So they got two more wins in the Rangers and four more wins in the Astros and Rays over that time. So I snuck them in there. I kept the Rays at four because their overall body of work. Uh, but like last week, we talked about how they are probably the most fragile team right now in our rankings. What about you, Joe and Corey? Why did you vote the teams the way you did? Well, I brought the Rays back. And did not vote for the team that I voted for last week, which I've forgotten which one it was. Um, nice. I think it was the Astros. Uh, nice team, and yeah. that was, yeah, yeah. So that was uh, the Astros going four and six in the last, you know, it, we, this, it's only been five days. But, uh, you know, I just feel like the Rays, some of the doubts that I had with them. I feel a little better about. I still don't feel any better enough to move them up significantly, and uh, but I still think they're top five team for now. 
Um, the Mariners are good. They're in third place in their own division, though. Granted, they've had a very good um, past week, but they're still a third place team right now. I don't know. They're close, but I brought the Rays back. I think all five of mine were the were the same, or I know they were. I maybe flip flopped, like um, moving Texas down, the Orioles up, Rays down a spot. But mine were the same, so not a whole lot to go off of there. Yeah, it seems like Atlanta, Baltimore, and L.A. Uh, Dodgers are rising to the top. L.A. I think we'll see a lot of change in the fourth and fifth spots for the final month, just whatever team happened to have the best week, because there's a lot of teams there in both wild card races that look like playoff teams. So it'll be interesting to see going forward. Um, with that, I just wanted to talk about some prospects. We Last week we talked about prospects that um, are in the farm – for these contenders that could potentially get a call up to impact the playoff race. But uh, with this past weekend, a lot of prospe- prospects uh, got promoted on teams that are not going to impact <laughs> the prospect or the, the playoff race. Of course, Mason Wynn finally got promoted. Um, yeah. So we, we always like to see that. But I got four guys and uh, Shanul, which I can't figure out how to pronounce his name, first baseman for the Angels got promoted. Um, so he's got a little big league action, but Shanul got me thinking because he was the 11th overall pick this past July out of college, Florida Atlantic uh, is a name I hadn't really been familiar with. Um, the draft's hard to follow anyway, but in the June draft, he was the 11th overall pick from Florida Atlantic in the minors in 21 games. He OPS over a thousand. So there's like, all right, come on up to the majors in college. He OPS okay. over a thousand. So. You know, That's he's awesome. Yeah, he's an older bat, played 21 games in the minors after getting drafted, and he's up. But these next three guys just wanted to share some stats with you guys so you guys can be aware of them as the season goes. If you're on a fan of one of these teams, it's something to watch, something to get excited about with your team, not really the playoff race. So Paul Skeens from LSU was drafted first overall by the Pirates. Uh, his teammate Dylan Cruz went second overall who's a center fielder. And so a lot of people thought Cruz was the best overall p- player, but if you wanted the pitcher, Skeens is by far your choice there. And Pittsburgh went with the pitcher um, and they called him up to double A today. Now he's only thrown four innings in a ball, but in those four innings, he had five strikeouts, no walks and only one hit. Um, he's the best pitcher on one of the best college programs the last couple of years. So they're calling him double A, which makes me think, you know, he's, you know, the Pirates had a good start to the season, got a lot of young guys. I mean, he's really in play for next year to be a big part of that rotation if he finishes well in double A AA and triple A this year. So that'll be fun to watch. And then his teammate Dylan Cruz got drafted second overall by the Nationals. They called him up to double A uh, this weekend as well in 15 games with the Miners. Um, he had a 1.123 OPS. And so he's come double A. That's a little interesting. I don't know how fast you rush him. Like if he plays next year, the Nationals are still going to be bad. They've got some young talent, but they're at least a year behind the Pirates. They don't have quite the crop of players that the Pirates do. And the Pirates still have like number one or number two mm-hmm. farm system. Like it's ridiculous. Pirates, Pirates are going to look good for a while. Yeah, Cruz but, is uh, still blocked by our boy Lane Thomas. Seems like another Cardinal outfit is playing pretty <laughs> well in a different city. Yeah, Thomas can play corners too. I mean, yeah, it'll be interesting. They got Thomas for a couple of years. If Cruz is up there, um, Abrams is playing better. Uh, mm-hmm. Ruiz was a top catching prospect, and Gray mm-hmm. and Gore look like a one two combo at the top of the rotation. So they got pieces, but not the depth that the Pirate system is going to provide, I don't think, next year. Um, but then this last one, I'm going to kick to Corey for a little bit too, because he's a catcher. But Ethan Salas was one of the top international signees. He wasn't drafted, but he was signed. Um, he was born June 1st, 2006. I was almost done with college, which is crazy. This dude uh, just turned 17, and he's getting called up to AA as a catcher, which is amazing because catchers always seem to have the slowest slowest progression. Slow. <laughs> slowest progression because you got to work That's on true, their man. defensive skills. Uh, but he's staying behind the play. Usually if you rush a catcher like Henry Davis in Pittsburgh or whatever, you move him off the position. But he's staying a catcher. He's going up to double A. Uh, combined with A ball and high A, he had a – I lost my spot there. He had a 782 OPS 
at 17 years old had nine homers. Like, I don't think I could hit the ball that far with a wooden bat at 17. I know I could. I could barely do it with an aluminum bat before BB Probably couldn't core. hit the ball. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just impressive. Because I know as soon as they signed him, they brought him to camp, and he caught some bullpens and did a little bit of catching in game, spring games, with, like, you Darvish and some of the big guys just to get – um some experience in spring this past year. So I have no idea what his timetable will be, but if you're in double a, you will be triple a all next year. And then he's up, you know, 19, 20 years old as a catcher, which is crazy. So Corey, you know anything else about him? What else have you seen with him? Uh, I don't know a whole lot other than it is just amazing that this 17 year old is in double a it's, it's interesting. Cause it is, he has had, I think kind of a similar sort of storyline to Harper where he actually was born in Kissimmee, Florida, but because he is of Venezuelan descent, he actually, I think moved to Venezuela so he could sign with a major league club at 16 as an international free agent, as opposed to having to wait until he graduated high school at 18. Um, and then I, I, I mean, he, he still got paid too. I think they, I think the Padres spent like 90 plus percent of their international pool bonus money to sign this guy. Um, and so far, I mean, you just laid out all the stats for us. Sounds like it's working out pretty well for him. Yeah, worth it. Um, yeah, if 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 he continues to stay at that catcher position, which it seems like they're pretty comfortable with his defense, if they're putting him out there in spring training with with the big name pitchers that they have, um, I did want to touch a little bit on your other guys as well. Like, uh, uh, hey, Shiro, real quick, I, real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, I just thought of something. It, uh, if you guys were nope, GM, no which obviously we're on. On the way to being being exactly being one. Continue. At a mi- yeah, no, you're speaking my language. Go ahead. Yeah, at, at a minimum, high ranking official. <laughs> How would you guys approach the international signing? Where are you? Are you big dogging on one guy like that, or are you like casting a wide net, trying to like? Let me know, tell you about a game five. you should play, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's called Out of the Park Baseball. That's another no, pod, Corey. <laughs> There's an international signing period in that. So you um, should have a good insight. Well, typically, it, it I don't want depends. I don't want anything in depth. But just let me know how. Let me know your strategy. It, it depends on the talent pool. If there is a bona fide singular guy that is leaps. Okay, and you, than, what, than what's your normal strategy? Okay. <laughs> um, I think in real life, man. <laughs> Spreading out the wealth is the way to go for international. Like you think, I'm trying to think of some of the big guys that didn't really pan out. Yeah. You know, like Acuna was nothing, and his dad was a minor league player, so people knew the name, and he's related to a lot of guys. Um, but I can think of a lot of guys that got big bonuses and never, never did anything. Daily. Um. Can you add money to your international pool, or are you set like a certain number? You can add more, yeah. Because I'm not signing anybody from the states, and I'm putting all that money in the international <laughs> pool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm big dogging it, but with a lot more money. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. You get penalized the next year. You won't be able to sign anybody, but that's fine. All I'll, get the, one I'll year. sign the whole field. Yeah, I'm good. And then wait six years for them to get to 22, so you can promote them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got about the other guys, Corey? What were you thinking? Oh, yeah. So, Chanuel, uh, I was just going to talk about I'm surprised that they called him up. Not only, I mean, I, he was a guy I almost talked about last weekend. Last week. We, we recorded during the week, not on the weekend. Um, but uh, I thought with the with the Crone trade, because it seemed like Chanuel was just going to be a first baseman. Um I want to see if I'm saying that name right because I know baseball reference has pronunciations, except on this guy's it name. Sounds good. To yeah, me. it's not on there. Yeah. So I'm saying it's not okay. There. Well, cool. Um, but yeah, he was a guy that uh, it seemed like was tearing up because I think he, they had him in Double A before they called him up. Um, you probably said that, but I, you know, I'm I got Joe's uh, listening ability today. <laughs> yeah, in Double A, sixteen games, nine fifty five. Yeah, two games underneath that. So it's he's tearing it up right out of the draft. And it's it's I mean the Angels the past few years have had that sort of strategy. Like Zach Neto came up really quick, um, and it's, they've I think Detmers really didn't spend that much time uh, down in in the minors. Uh, Those are all which, college guys that they were aggressive. That's with, true. Yeah. That's true. 
Uh, but it, it seemed like they knew that they needed to get them there. Um, and we can we can talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk some more about angels a little later. But uh, yeah, and then Cruz and, and Skeens, like they are doing exactly what people thought they would. I, I think they were. I guess. I think by far they were the the most MLB ready. Obviously, Shanul has made it there first, but I think Shanul is is a very much a bat first guy. Where I think yeah. Cruz is a much more well rounded player, and in Skeens is. I mean, even when I watched him pitch in the College World Series, it was like he probably could face major league lineups. The next, uh, you know, five days later. After yeah, the, if the Pirates were in the playoff race, you'd be seeing yeah. him in the pin. But it's no need this time now. But it's it's interesting to see these guys that get moved up quickly, um, and it's 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 crazy. I mean, I, I imagine like you you go and you get drafted, and you know, twenty days later, now you're <laughs> in the or twenty whatever, however many twenty yeah. games later, you're 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 in the show. Especially, I, I saw it was like you know you get a you get a high five from Otani on your first game, and it's like that's pretty good, mm-hmm. pretty good teammates to have. Not bad. Yeah, it'd be interesting. All three of those teams, too, with the Nationals, Pirates, and Angels, will all be in different places next year. Like, we don't know what the Angels are going to do. Um, Pirates plan on competing, but the Nationals will still be rebuilding. So, it'll be fun to watch those guys. Speaking of which, what's fun to watch, Jared? Uh, baseball. That's right. All right, oh, moving no. on. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that, that's, that's me. Pod. Um, before we move on, I do have to give a huge special shout out. He's been texting me um, that he just got caught up the other day. It is my boy Cody Freeman. We all know who Cody, Cody. Freeman is this year on this pad on this pad pod. Um, <laughs> he uh, it it must be a Chad Billingsley thing because he was talking about that the He's whole time. He's a Dodgers fan, man. Yeah. He's a huge Dodgers fan, so I knew it was gonna come back. But he uh, he loved the shout out. Uh, so I had to give him a good, good shout out and uh, let him know that we appreciate all the all the tuning in. Um, so she didn't name drop right. random Dodgers every night. Uh, I was uh, I just Sh- looked up that. Sean Green. Yes. Foreshadowing. Andre Ethier. Oh, foreshadowing. Andre Ethier and Sean Green are awesome. Name the you five guys... straight rookie of the years that Dodgers had. That's that'd be a good question. You guys weren't gonna name drop one? I thought that was what we were doing. Oh, he just. I'm saying foreshadowing. Money. I might be having some. I think I Joe's got some plans, so I don't want to play for the yeah. Dodgers. Okay. Tom Green's coming on the pod later. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Tom Hollinsworth with Chad Billingsley. Um, <laughs> but so just a little little insert here. Um, this time of the year, everybody knows what's going on, right? Little League World Series. Everybody looking do, like yeah. monsters out there. Um, checking birth certificates and making sure these kids are of age. They may not be, but let the kids play. You know what I'm saying? Um, Danny Almonte back in today, tomorrow. Danny Almonte coming yes. back. He's still 12, baby. Heck yes. And then uh, we had the Little League Classic last night between the Nationals and the Phillies. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but my take is I know they're playing at like uh, in that area, like Williamsport and stuff, but man, like there's how many people fit in that stadium? Like Maybe three thousand. Doesn't look that big. Oh, yeah. yeah, look that yeah, up. I, yeah, yeah, it's that man. <laughs> three three thousand at Volunteer, and then Lombardy. The yeah, Dang, so Lombardy I think might be the one that has the hill. Um, much of the capacity of the stadium is bench seating with large berms surrounding the stadium, provide an additional seating allowing over forty thousand spectators at Lombardy, which I think is the because they have like the. Main oh, stadium, okay. which is Lombardy, and then volunteer. What I I think, again, the actual seats is not that. Right. Um, but yeah, well, apparently anyway, you can get forty thousand people there. My point was definitely didn't look like a lot of people were showing up. But again, I know it was the Nationals, so you're probably not showing up for that. But you know, one of the most exciting people in Bryce Harper there, and you got to figure out a way to make that place more packed. But anyway, still cool nonetheless. Um, more players mic'd up, more people talking, which I think should be in every single game. Regardless, um, and then all the cool bats. I know Cooney sent a picture of one yesterday of the the pencil. Uh, did you see Bryce's first at bat with the Philly fanatic? That was yeah. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I saw that after I texted you guys, so I missed it. The yeah, time. yeah. So that one was pretty. I'm gonna cool. have to look that up because I did not see that, <laughs> dude. It, um, it's so weird. That's gotta be distracting, though. You know, 
as a fielder, oh, as a for pitcher. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I and wonder. Alec, yeah, I wonder how far they let that go. But I'm just a big bats fan. Bright yellow. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a big fan because it's. You got these MLB players becoming little kids again. Like they're all at the game, little league games before, like cheering on the kids, being on the field. And so, like, that's such a cool moment to share. Um, cause at one time they were all on that field. And then just to kind of give back, I think is super cool and good for baseball, obviously. And then there was, um, they interviewed one kid and they asked him how many, you know, um, signatures that he signed. He's like, you know, I've done about 30. And like, well, how many MLB players? And he's like, uh, oh, 10 people, 10 MLB players have asked me. No big deal. It's like, whatever. <laughs> So, awesome. It's just kind of cool for the kids to be just kind of like nonchalant about it and mm. all that fun stuff. So I don't know. What's your guys' take? I mean, I, I don't I'll be honest, like I don't watch a lot of the Little League World Series games. Um, because they're one, there's so many. Um, mm-hmm. but I do try to tune in around this time to, to kind of see who's playing and all that fun stuff. But I'll kick it to you guys. Joe, take it away. Well, well, I was gonna say something you said right there at the end reminded me of something. Um Kind of the, the mystique about around big leaguers as a kid, or, or I mean, it sounds like maybe these kids handled it better than I would have. But um, I wasn't even in little league; we were in high school playing down there, so I was probably uh, sixteen, and we were we were uh, lined up in the tunnel or whatever it is, and uh, Jason Eisenhausen walked by all of us, and he I mean he's a large man to begin with, but just the fact that he was you know a major league player. It was, I mean, I, I know better now not to like hold a human being in such reverence, but um, it was like, this is like a God walking in front of us, even though it's just, <laughs> it's just the two mm-hmm. pitches. Right. Um, so I, yeah, they, their composure w- would be better than mine at that age. For sure. They, they take to that stage and, you know, they, they seem to do pretty well. I'm just looking yeah. up. I wish we thought about this earlier. It could have been a fun game. Um, and I don't know if this is accurate. This is Little League's Little League.org website. So they say there's 64 confirmed graduates of the Little League World Series that have played in the bigs. And one's very famous, Cody Bellinger. So I'm taking that off the table. Um, Cody Bellinger. But can each of you name somebody who has played in the Little League World Series? There's a few names on here, I, got, I got three. Go ahead, Corey. Okay. Uh, it's the Jeter. It's I'll Jeter. go back. I don't see Jeter. I'm going. I'm the 90s. Okay. I'm the 80s. How old would he have been? Yeah, 90s. He would have been 90. So no, he's not there. Flavor Frazier. We've only 64 of them. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Todd Frazier. Todd Frazier. Yeah, he's the one that always comes Jer- to my mind too. I'm not sure why. Wait, Jared. Jared. Okay. Golly, I thought he man, was, man, name he all. Said go, go with all three. <laughs> go ahead, Jared. Or Draxon. Um, Cody Bellinger. That's true. He's on there. Nice. Got it. Dude, Anybody I know. I, I don't, I don't no know. Idea. Okay. Yeah. Who else you got, Corey? Jonathan Scope. Yeah. Uh, played with Profar. Yep. Um, those are the three that I had immediately. I assume that's a Netherlands team. Yes. Kyrsa. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, Christian Beth and Courts are in 04. So Profar and Scope are also 04. Um, oh, nice. Beth Christian Beth Court 04 Conforto was 04 Gritchick was 03 and 04 um, Colby mm-hmm. and Corey Rasmus in 99 Lance Lynn in 99 wow so, yeah there's a lot of guys the most recent is Yanni Hernandez from 2011 which I don't know what team he's on they say Lance Lynn is the same size he was then <laughs> as he is now <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> poor Lance Lynn <laughs> hey, he's nice dominating. things about him <laughs> so there's like he, maybe Cody Bellinger is the most successful. Todd Frazier maybe right with him career wise, but do you guys we, want uh, to had guess? Some... What's that, Corey? Oh, well, I was just gonna say if you guys wanted to take a guess on how old Danny Almonte is now. Oh gosh, man! What year was I'll that? say. Well, how old I'll was he then? Is the question thirty? I'll That's say thirty nine. Good... Okay. Yeah, a uh, forty. I'll go thirty seven. He is 36. So ah. I thought you guys were going to be way under because apparently he played in the Little League World Series in 2001, which seems outrageous because I feel like it was six years ago. <laughs> um, here we are. Here we are. 
Have we had some discussion on here about Little League in the past? Or I think it's we come up in our like favorite stories. No, yeah. right. not specifically Little League, but Little League did come up. I didn't know if we had any any all time great moments in our our Little League careers that we can remember or think of. You guys remember making Little League? How did that go? Like how did when or Cooney? Correct me if I'm wrong, but we had like. Like tryouts, you know, yeah. all the – so you have Farm League, which is like 7 to 10 or something. Mm-hmm. You can stay to 12. <laughs> we, I wanted to. I, I, was, I was just telling my family this story yesterday. Go for um, it. When, so my dad coached a little bit in Little League. So, like, I don't know. He was it somehow got me to go tryouts. And I was adamant I was not going to try. I was going Shout to stay to down. Pat, elite coach. <laughs> I was going to stay elite. down in farm league. Um, I was scrawny. I was scared. Um, and I was going to stay down in farm league. And I went to to tryout day just to shag fly balls. I thought that's the only reason why I was going. And I remember that sudden they called my name to go hit. And I was terrified. Of course, I got drafted by the worst team. So that probably <laughs> is the reason why. But on my farm league team, you know, so I'm seven, eight, nine years old. We still don't say have... his name. Don't say his name. <laughs> I, I got to. You guys no. all know his brother. You guys all know initials. He was a beast. Uh, Al um, was like <laughs> six four, and he would hit the ball. He was. He was still. Oh, he farm... was. I know he, he was. was still on my farm league team, and he would hit the ball out to right center. He's a right handed hitter. He would hit it out consistently out to right center across the parking lot into the horse field like mm-hmm. 320 350 whatever he's doing that in the farm league and i'm like if he's down here in farm league how's little league gonna be i ain't gonna go play a little league i'm just glad this guy's on my team and he never took, he never went to little league i took a, a gr- one of his grounders off my chest one time oh, oh man did. we had to pause the game and i don't think he played after that like Ooh. I don't know what happened. You said like, you said AL, um, yeah, Adam. Hey. I don't think it's you, my brother. Um, <laughs> no, it's not Adam. So don't, Lee. don't let them think they're talking about <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> I'm trying to think. The younger one has got to be close to Adam's age, though. Maybe a little bit older than Adam. I'm trying to think the ages here. What, what, what do you what guys remember just, from your? Just text me later. <laughs> I'll text you later. What do you guys remember from Corey? Did we play together on in Little League? Yeah. Dude, yeah. I'm sorry, my my memory is bad. I remember my first strikeout, so that was pretty cool. And then I'm like, pitching is awesome. And then I think I got shelled the next game, and I'm like, pitching <laughs> is the worst. <laughs> uh, I just remember man. hitting dingers all the time. So you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey was a beast, man. Corey was a beast in little league. Did you really hit dingers a lot? Uh, I hit a. Oh, why do you? I think I hit a home run that? off Gavin. I don't uh, believe that one bit. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, I hit like probably five. Corey's probably our best season. hitter. Like that's wow. not me joking. Corey's probably our best hitter. Well, I hit the I bathroom. Bat- I was our best hitter. I bat clean up when I was ten. So I mean, it's not that doesn't mean anything. I took Gavin deep. It's all that I. Uh, oh, that's been nice, Gavin Bogey got deep by Colvin. All right, I struck out Keaton uh, Baker, and that was big because that's pretty they good. Yeah. they dominated Little League. So I hit a home. My first homer, my only Little League homer. I was twelve. And it was in an all-star tournament in Rushville. It wasn't the normal all-stars, but a group of us went and played a tournament in Rushville after we got eliminated. Do you remember that, Joe? Uh, Waters and Van Stream were our coach. No, Waters and Denny were our coaches. We went to Rushville. Where did we play at over there? <laughs> a baseball field. <laughs> I hit one uh, right over the foul pole down left field line. First time I ever hit home. I remember that. <clears throat> But yeah, that was, yeah that that farm league experience terrified me of little league. But little league ended up not being that bad. So that's my memories of little league. On the worst team, having a lot of fun. That's what it's all you can do. Did I did I tell our pickoff story? My little league pickoff story, Joe. Last time, do you remember? I uh, even if you did, it's worth worth saying it again. <laughs> So hey, we I, might teach we might teach some yeah might here. teach you so so especially in that time I we didn't do this when I was coaching but at that age we taught everybody for some reason to hustle down on a walk and round first I think a lot of it was hey if it's a bad catcher pass ball in little league you can go to straight to second on a walk 
So that was a lot of it. So every team did this that we played with. And so we had the coach's son was our catcher. And I played a lot of first if I wasn't pitching. And he, we got three balls. The coach would yell Iowa, which was our code word. Cause I, I was born in Iowa. So that's just what we picked. And they'd be like, why are you yelling Iowa? So we'd yell Iowa. So if on ball four, Reed would throw it down to me at first and I would just wait and, Guys would sprint down to first. They, they turn, throw the bat or whatever, um, sprint down to first, round first, and then I would tag them out. And, I mean, we got numerous people with this, numerous. And I remember one time uh, a CS <laughs> rounded first, played for the Lions, and his dad was the first base coach. And the ball bounces to me. Like, it's so obvious that the throw is coming. It's a horrible throw. I have to, like, scoop it up after a couple Come of on, bounces. Reed. Yeah, Reed's arm wasn't the the strongest. He was great at blocking and defensive work, but throws were throws were at times were adventures. And so I catch catch the ball. The guy rounds first. His dad's the first base coach, and I tag him. Oh man! And these this guy had a hot <laughs> had a hot temper. So it was it was crazy. I I don't know how many times that worked. Probably a dozen times. And you could see it coming. Bad opposing like, coaching. Yeah, like why mm-hmm. the first Very. base coach doesn't say stay on first. It was amazing how many times how many times it worked. Hey, kudos to you though. That's it's a big brain move. We couldn't strike anybody out, so we had to get them out on the walks. That's how that's how that works. That is a that yeah, is a much you, better. Uh, go ahead. How do you mark that down in the uh, in the old um, scorecard? I think it's a walk and a pickoff. Yeah, it'd pick be off. pickoff, I guess. <laughs> I don't that's know. Much... It was it was crazy. That's a much better code than what we did in high school, which was like just saying the people's names. And it's like <laughs> you played against people that you knew. Yeah. So it's like, oh, they just said the first baseman's name. Maybe I should be a little heads up here that something might be happening with this guy I'm standing next to. Um, Especially when your first baseman is the coach's son. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> like everybody, yes. Schultz. Hey. Oh, that's Johnny over there. We know yeah. who that is. <laughs> Hey, we didn't have pump, the names on the back of our shirts, but he was just pumping them up. You know, wasn't yeah, sure. yeah. anything away. He's just saying, "Hey, get your head in the game." Yeah, we don't. Honey. I, I, I always call my son by his last name. That's it. Hey, yeah, hey, like, hey, Jordan, Johnny, get your head in the game. Yeah, yeah it was exactly. like, could you say the two people, or it'd be like my name and then the, whoever I'm supposed to throw it to. It's like, okay, these people live ten miles away from <laughs> us. They all know who we are. Uh, yeah, Grigsville's best player was Grigsville's best player was my neighbor growing up, so he knew everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, okay, yeah, I, we had great coaches. Maybe just could have put a little bit more thought into the play calling. This ah. is a complete tangent, and we got it. Next time, coaches on, we're gonna talk about this some more. But talk about how we stole signs. What well, our code was for stealing signs when we were back. Oh. Yeah, first, first name, class. last name. Yeah. yeah. Man, it was just the same thing. Too. Corey's batting. If I'm coaching, I see a fastball's come. I say, "Hey, let's go, Corey. Hey, let's go, Colvate." And you know, fastball or off speeds come. So I just blew, you know, Pittsfield's super secret that we've yeah. kept for 35 years. Well, yeah, we're never gonna win another game again. AKA the pitcher and catcher caught on to it like literally two pitches into the game. Yeah, <laughs> if they didn't, we didn't need to cheat anyway. So <laughs> right, we were already up by 15. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's great! Any other little league stories before we move on to Corey's next exciting topic? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, there'll be more to come later, but yeah, I'm now. sure we'll get get some time to write them up. All right, Corey, what do you got for us? Bring well, it on. This is this is something that I've not well versed in. I've never uh, delivered uh, this particular type of of speech, so I googled it, um, and it is. Uh, how to write a eulogy for a loved one. Uh, and, it's, and it says, uh, start off with a quote. So I looked up quotes from Angels in the Outfield. And this says, um, even though you can't see us, we're always watching. And I just want to take a moment to remember the 2023 Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, formerly the Anaheim Angels. Um, I also would probably like to remember the 2024 through 2033 Los Angeles Angels. Because if this, is, if this is how your if this is how your team performs with the best player on the earth. Wait, what year did you just say? 2024 to 2033. 
Okay. <laughs> Oof. So, a couple ten years there. <laughs> well, uh -oh. when the when the best player on earth leaves your team, <laughs> and you, you are the Cardinals. you are this bad with him, we will still have Mike Trout. Don't worry. Uh, Mike Trout. I love Mike Trout. Uh, again, I I can't imagine. Okay, let me look back this up. There's something about. Um, Sorry, I'm getting you all off kilter. I apologize. No, no, no. I'm I'm trying to get my my bullet points of how to perform a eulogy in here, and there was something about. <laughs> well, I'm glad, example, I'm glad you're practicing here, right on this podcast. But, yeah, there was an example <laughs> that says I can't imagine how empty it'll feel to spend time watching baseball without Mike Trout and Shohei Otani on the same field. But um, they haven't been on the same field much anyway. That's true. They haven't been on the field the, field the same the same field that much. Um, but it's you know we 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 all loved you. Los mm -hmm. Angeles Angels, Angels of Anaheim. Uh, we are all pulling for you. We are all deeply saddened by the events that uh, transpired in your in your cause of death, uh, which is, I, I still am not quite sure why things have turned out the way that they have. Um, I know mm -hmm. a couple guys got guitars here. I don't know if you want to. I'm just well, well, I did post. Guitar, so. Yeah, I could have Sarah, a... Sarah, Sarah McLaughlin's going to make. Yeah, play that sad dog song behind this. <laughs> could I throw out a couple of recommendations for on how to improve my eulogizing? No, for the angels. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. How are you going to fix them? Yeah, yeah. Um, Move Tony Danza is a great pitcher. Matthew McConaughey can play the outfield. Oh, I'm close. Danny Glover, Tony Danza. And coach. Um. Let me look at the rest of this cast. Uh, George, Joseph Gordon Levitt is <laughs> Adrian uh, ready for the big Adrian Brody. Joseph Gordon Levitt can be your bat boy. Christopher Lloyd can be your friendly just angel. Just there. Just there in general. Yeah. Mascot. I think um, the mom from Rookie of the Year could do a crossover. I mean, bring heck, they could be the pitching coach. Yeah. Bring her son with her. Yeah, take her on Henry Rosengardner. Yeah, I will mm -hmm. say for our listeners, make sure you tune in for at least another like four months because eventually we're going to get to our favorite baseball. <laughs> and that we're going to have a lot of battle be... royale for their baseball movies. It's going to be that great. So it's going to be epic. So oh, stick with Corey, us for that being your first one, man. That was pretty good. Yeah, so. no, I, I really so I don't know if this is I think this is more the coroner's job, but I did just kind of want to also officially declare them dead. Um, you have to give a cause of death, though. Yeah. Okay. And time. Uh, boy, when when was the time of death? It the was trade probably deadline. sometime last week. Well, that, everybody got kind of happy about it. Cause of death. I Maybe it was just um, the rest of the team thinking they didn't have to do anything because Shohei was going to. And Weak they just skeleton structure. Yeah, <clears throat> they had uh, they were they had weak bones, strong muscles. Or something like that. I'm just looking at their their record right now: 32 mm -hmm. and 46 against mm -hmm. winning teams. 32 and 46 against winning. No, teams. Bueno. And Why? their whole division is good except for Oakland. But well, it's because good. Shohei and Trout can go, you know, eight for nine with four homers, and they'll still lose by somehow by. Yeah, six it runs. is amazing how those guys can have ridiculous games. And they'll lose ten to nine. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> um, I'm I'm so saddened by their passing. Um, I really, and I think all of us really thought they had something going on this year, and they don't. I mean, I get they got four pitchers with an ERA over four, so I guess you know poor pitching is probably at the top of that list. But they knew they they have not had good They've pitching known that for before. years. Yeah, mm -hmm. they had a whole draft where they only drafted pitchers, and I don't. But let me tell you, it doesn't look like that's going to work out for them either. So that's that's also part of the you know uh, dying every year for ten years uh, theory here is that I would I just, say that if you gave me that that payroll and the power to make the decisions that the results would be significantly better. You'd be in the playoffs <laughs> at a minimum. Well, they do have a new GM. He's been there like this is the second year now. So you would probably trade we'll Shohei see. immediately. <laughs> right, do you want Shohei or do you want to be in the playoffs? Shohei. The, the, I don't care about the playoffs. 
His name is Perry Maniason, so that merch. right? <laughs> yeah. So I, he's also put in an impossible situation where mm-hmm. I think the best choice was to trade Shohei, but you can't. Um, you do it. You take the heat. I, well, I'm just like if if Jerry Depoto's there, he'll trade him. He'll trade Trout. He'll trade his shoes for a, I don't know. Middle reliever, single well, million bucks. Um, but I because yeah. I, was this his first GM? Was this Perry's first actual GM job? First full time GM job. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. been so assistant I just for think... Toronto. He's followed Alex Anthopoulos around, so he's been in Toronto. That's Atlanta. what I thought because I, I knew you knew a little bit about it. But that's the thing, like with with that sort of track record and being kind of new to the game, like he's in a situation where I just don't think you can do it. Where so I think some of these more seasoned guys could make that move and and no he I mean, hasn't gone crazy like the old gm with inflated contracts so they're out from underneath that mm-hmm. and then last year he added a bunch of make good deals on, with veterans like Syndergaard and stuff um they decided then, to make bad on those deals yeah i mean it's a one-year investment though you know we always talk about one year is no big deal Mm-hmm. Um, and this year he tried the trade approach and he made, I mean, he acquired pieces that they needed. And in some places like at third base, he's acquired three or four of them. <laughs> Just like it is what it yeah. is. It's amazing. Yeah. Jared. Uh, I mean, do you, do you think the Chicago bulls would have traded Jordan if they weren't winning? Dude, I was thinking the exact same thing, man. I'm like, do you trade Jordan in 96 if he's out of his contract? No, I don't. I mean, but they were like, it's the, the angels have never won. It, <laughs> like NBA is different. It's, you can win with one guy, especially back then. He didn't have super teams, but MLB mm-hmm. you can't with one guy. Like name it. I mean, name a team that's won just one guy. It doesn't, doesn't happen. One guy can get hot like Mad Bum and make a big difference, but that lineup <clears throat> was still ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nick Punto, that's the one yeah. guy. Anyway, Scott Spezio, a Nick Punto, that's it. Twenty twenty three, Los Angeles, Angels of Anaheim, <laughs> time of we death. We'll remember what you fondly, and I miss you. That's about August third. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, I'd, we I'd were like all to say dead on we arrival, were. maybe. Of the nice. people from the trade deadline, <laughs> the team was dead when they got there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's sad, but it is true. Darn. Well, Joe, uh, you've been hyping this and foreshadowing this, so floor is yours. Yeah, real quick before we get into this, I got something else. I sent y'all. I sent y'all a text. <laughs> I looked at it. You, you may have lot of time prepare for this. Yeah, you may have saw this floating around on social media, but somebody sent it to me, so I thought we could do it real quick before we get into uh, the other segment. So listeners, you may have saw it as well, but uh, the post is, or the challenge, or the question is, you have 10 at-bats against an MLB pitcher. So, I mean, that's a wide variety of talent there. Let's say it's let's say it's uh, Blake Snell and 10 at-bats. So a foul tip is a hundred bucks. A ball in play is one thousand. A base hit is ten thousand, and a home run is one million. So we're going to go around the table here, listeners. You can kind of get in your head what you think you would make. You can uh, let us know in the comments. But uh, who wants to go first? Who thinks uh, who thinks you're making money on these tenant bats? Uh, all all <laughs> eleven hundred dollars. I will foul tip one, and I will put a ball somewhere. In between the foul lines, I was thinking That's twelve. <laughs> I was thinking I'd foul tip two at five. I mean, the one in play could just be it has to go forward. <laughs> I'm not yeah. saying I'm hitting it hard. I'm just saying it's it's going to go forward. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow, you Jay guys Lee? are very, you guys are very confident. Uh, that's, that's what about, I was saying. Oh, pretty that's optimistic. Oh for uh, that's over oh ten. All with the other seven. Just a just a real quick dig here. Can I change my pitcher? Yes. Cool. I'm facing Clayton Kershaw, but I'm putting a Cardinals jersey on because he can't pitch against the Cardinals. Sorry, yep. Cody. Anyway, um, <laughs> I I told myself, uh, if I'm being honest, I said I put 
fifty dollars because I'm maybe getting a foul tip. Well, foul tip's a hundred bucks. I know. So I'd, I'd say I might get one. Like, dude, okay. you guys, twelve hundred dollars. I don't think you're touching anything a major league pitcher's throwing at you. I'm sorry. I I told I myself I told myself two hundred. I said two maybe two foul balls. And there's no you, chance that one of those fouls would just fall in fair territory. You it's guys not a hit. have seen me bat <laughs> in my strike zone, but it does say you can't huge. bunt. Doesn't say you can't bunt. Yeah, you none try of us is MLB pitcher. Of, He's I mean, right we've all face. saw ninety miles an hour like at most ten times in our life. Yeah, I, mean, I could have been like anyway. bats. I, I'm making ten million dollars. What listeners? What do you think you would get? I think at some point on this pod. We will have an MLB pitcher be a guest, and we'll be able to have this challenge. So, I've written yeah, all this down. Course. Well, I will say just to make we'll it be... fair, since since fifty is not an option, I will say a hundred dollars. I could okay. maybe foul tip one, and that's me getting. How fast lucky. can a pitching machine go? I mean, it'll all be fastballs. But you gonna start practicing? No, let's go crank it up. Let's see what we can do. Well, I'm sure if we're doing the Pittsburgh plus. High School pitching machine. I am wearing full gear because that thing is <laughs> yep. Same. Yeah, that thing that's coming at you. No. <laughs> that's CJ Ingersoll's old machine. Things like 25 years old. No all right. Well, I got um, I got all that noted down. Thanks for playing along with that. Yep. But the segment that I hyped, I think I just started <laughs> hyping it last week, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. I know you almost I did. did it last week, and then we brought in Bill Clem instead. That's right. That's right. That's right. So the segment, which I gave you the title to last week, um, and I'm hoping this this becomes such a fan favorite, you know, that we get to keep doing it because I've got the first topic that we're going to do it on tonight, but it's definitely not the best topic that we could be doing it on. But I had to go with it because it's what set the bar high. (laughs) This is a good topic, but it's a bad game. No, 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 no. It's a bad topic, but a good game. Oh, got you, got you. So the segment is going to be called Appreciate or Reinstate, which the smartest guy in our pod, Corey, what up? he's like, oh. those two things don't even go together. I don't understand it. Well, let me explain it to you. Man, that was a good Corey impersonation. That was good, man. I, I thought those there was two Corys here. <laughs> yeah, your voice right. wasn't high enough. <laughs> It only goes high when he's excited. Corey's voice has like a four octave range. His normal really voice does. is down. Yeah, it does. With- you need to try out for some power metal bands. <laughs> okay, so Start appreciate one. reinstate. Let me tell you where I came up with the idea. So I am at the gym on right, August Prove it. 15th. What is that? That's last Tuesday I was at the gym. Okay, doing my cardio, trying to not get any fatter than I already am. And, and I'm watching, um, I, I guess I had to be ESPN Classic, but they were showing a baseball game from August 15, 1989. It was Cubs. It was Cincinnati. So as we go through here, you know, we'll have some fun with this, but I think it'll be a little educational and we'll throw some trivia in so you all can – Try to answer some questions. But anyway, 1989, Chicago Cubs, Cincinnati Reds. Cincinnati Reds coached by Pete Rose. Let's see if we can name some players. There's some big names on these teams, too. I mean, the big names from that era. At least for the Cubs. 1989, Cubs. At least for the Cubs. Let's see if we can all get at least one. Corey? Um, Ryan Sandberg. I'm taking it. Better with the Reds. Okay, Coon, you got Ryan Sandberg. Corey, you're going to be worse with the Reds. Uh, this is before I was born. Um, I watched same. a lot of baseball when I was four. Charles yeah, Johnson. Uh, I mean, there's no Charles Johnson. Jay Lee, you got anybody <laughs> for me? Think of big name Cubs back in the early 90s. Got it right here. Easy. Kenny Lofton. Dude, that's just the first day that came to my brain. No, Kenny Lofton. All right, listeners, I hope you were able to at least think of one. Um, But the Cubbies, they got Sandberg. They have Mark (laughs) Grace. They have Mark (laughs) Grace. They have Andre Dawson. Um, Mm, I was told today that this name is Sean Dunstan, even though I was saying Shawan Dunstan. It's Sean. 
It is Sean. Okay. Yeah, I had it's spelled Shawan. Okay. It's very much spelled Shawan. Mm-hmm. Very still okay. Up. Oh, and it was also pitched by Greg Maddox. Okay, let's get back to the segment. Holy smokes. Can you say get back to your point, idiot? Get back to your point, idiot. So here we go. So I was watching it. The game went into extra innings, and I was watching the Reds pitch, and they had this guy by the name of Mitch Williams come in. Dude, crazy. Um, And let me – I got a PowerPoint for you all. Let me get that thing rolling here real quick. Oh, God. Oh, you don't he, want it, Corey? No, no, go I ahead. I want it. Why well, get that ready. Uh, he gave up a famous homer in the playoffs. Playoffs. Anybody know who hit hit it? Um, I'm gonna Harris. double down. I'm gonna say double down and say Kenny Lofton, Joe Carter, right? I, you I, didn't. Yeah, don't give me a chance. But yeah, it's fine. So Corey's gonna say. I was giving Jared a chance to oh, guess Kenny Lofton, which was a <laughs> legitimate guess. <laughs> no PowerPoint yet. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get this little boy to work on. here. Stand by for technical difficulties. But as I was watching the game, guys, which has nothing also, to do a, with the Cubs. What a runs. weird game! Yeah, you got that. There yep. he is, man. Look at you got Mitch Williams. You have this lefty that's fallen over, and what popped into my mind, which could be completely wrong, high percent chance that it is, is that back in the day, it seemed like every team had a pitcher. With some outrageous windup, some outrageous delivery, some outrageous follow through, and as we've got more technical and analytical, and coach, 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 coach year round, I feel like we've gotten away from this. So this segment ongoing is going to be: Do we appreciate that this used to be a part of the game, and we leave it there, and just look at it as it was something that used to be? Or by way of massive social media presence and our rakers just blowing this up, do we try to get these things reinstated into the game today? So, again, I think as we go along, we'll have some much better topics rather than, hey, do we want um, do we want Mitch Williams back in the game? But that it's what came to my head. And, again, you can still read my sign, and, and my brain's crazy, so... <laughs> I, like I wanted to talk about what y'all think about uh, maybe getting maybe getting some craziness back in the game. I have a slideshow just of some other pitchers, some other maybe pitching strategies. So let's roll through those real quick, and then listeners, you can you can think well, about that, it. That's how he landed after every pitch. Yeah, yeah ready to, ready to field. Obviously, <laughs> get out of the so way. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, I guess who, when you guys think, what do you have any names that come to mind when you think of outrageous approach to pitching as far as mechanics? More so in the windups and deliveries, less so in the follow through like this. But I mean, you got like Hideo and Dontrell, mm-hmm. you know, as far as the windups. Don, Dontrell's the guy that, that comes I to think mind. of, uh, I think a Jordan was it Jordan Walden who jumped. Yeah, mm-hmm. Walden yeah. and Carter Caps both jumped. Which how was that at never? How was that deemed illegal? I never really understood. It that. finally got called a box. Like Carter Carter Caps started getting called box on like AAA, <laughs> like on a rehab assignment they were calling box. The well, you guys trade. nailed two of them. I, I I just thought real quick of some people: Dontrell, Nomo, that Brad Klontz? That's Darren O'Day in the middle. Darren there. O'Day, okay. And he's not super submarine, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, one of the Rogers, Taylor, and Tyler. I don't know yeah. which one's which. The right handed like, one. Again, back in the day, you know, I say the day like it's eighty years ago, but um, eighties, nineties, it just seemed like everybody either had a super submarine righty or a lefty that was falling <laughs> off the plate. Um, I got eight more slides here, though, of some recreations that I did myself. Dude, Tom Glavin said the exact same thing last night. So, Joe, you are just as good as Tom Glavin because <laughs> he was watching that Rodgers guy pitch for the Giants against the Braves. He goes, man, back in my day, every bullpen had one of these guys. And the Braves always did. Brad Klontz was there for a long time. Greg McMichael was there for a long time. And then Darren O'Day. 
So what you're saying is we can replace Joe with Tom Glavin? <laughs> yes. Joe go to go to Bally South. I'll take, I'll take and the we'll switch. take Tom Glavin. <laughs> but um the exact well, same thing you said. That's funny. And if you look at these next few pictures, you might think I actually am Tom Glavin or slightly better, but just some stuff I thought we could maybe bring back again through massive social media presence. Um I had this, this is right handed going over. Uh, this is still right-handed, just releasing the ball late. I don't know who this is. Uh, this is actually turning your back and then looking at the batter from behind <laughs> the your back Quato? shoulder. That's the Johnny Cueto. Oh, you're looking the other way, though. That's good. Uh, here's 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 kind of your Mitch Williams. Uh, Who's taking these pictures? Somebody, oh, somebody told me this is how... Uh, what was his name? Fernando Valenzuela pitch. Yeah, so Valenzuela looked up while he was lefty. Yeah, through like this. Also, get get <laughs> looser is... pants. Nah, man, tighter pants. <laughs> hold on, hold oh on. <laughs> so this is submarine. This is lefty follow through. What is that hat? This is the, <laughs> uh, this is what I call the Bill Jenkins. I'm sure Bill's listening. <laughs> That's so it, man. That's great. So, yeah, I will say um, somebody squeezed into size medium pants for all those pictures. We can tell. Um, yeah, I need to we need get to that off the screen, exercises. please. That's the worst picture end on there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let me stop the share. But if, if awesome. you heard me um, on the intro, I was I was playing. I was playing. I was singing Wild Thing, which I guess was Mitch Williams nickname. I didn't know that until I looked it up. Um, I don't know if mullet. that's where. Ricky Vaughn's character off of Major League came from. Maybe, maybe not. Would have been right around that time. Yeah. Anyway, that's just kind of what popped into my brain um, on the uh, on the elliptical there the other day. So I love it. Um, yeah, thank. You. If you guys have any ideas, um, maybe shoot them our way. Comment, appreciate, or reinstate. But mm-hmm. we'll have some more topics as we go along. I don't know what what you guys think of that. Not so much the segment about actually bringing that <laughs> stuff back because I'm all on board for it. Reinstate. I, I appreciate it. Um, but I Ew. think with the amount of injuries we already have, you can't like the, the it has phased out of the game to try and prevent them. It's not doing a great job. Um, but like you look at Dontrell specifically because he was the guy I thought of and pulled up. He had five good seasons between 21 and 25 and then never threw more than 75 innings again in his career. So basically by the time he was 25 he was basically done. Um, And it's you still see guys get hurt but they, they are trying to stabilize normalize mechanics in an attempt to to keep them in there. So like if you want to see these guys play, they might look a little boring. So I will uh I'll Ooh, appreciate sure. it, but leave it in the past because I like I like to see players play. I say here? reinstate because yeah, we got all the drive line biometric stuff, but it ain't working. DeGrom is touted as like having perfect mechanics and the man averages twenty starts a year. And that's decreasing. He's only hit 30 starts four times in his in 10 years. And he, you know, he does everything perfect. You know, so might as well reinstate it. And I'd be, you know, I'd really be Don Trill and be awesome for five years and have perfect mechanics and get crushed. <laughs> so I don't know. Reinstate it. Well, that's three to one on reinstate. So let's start this firestorm. <laughs> there we go. Blow, oh. blow it up. Blow up the <laughs> Rein- Reinstated. But they're even trying to get rid of some of the funky windups. Like they uh, told Luis Garcia he can't do his cradle rock delivery Mm -hmm. windup. And it was all before the pitch. I mean, it's not mechanical. It's just timing stuff. But, yeah, it's going hard in their direction, it sounds like. Let's reinstate it. Not to open up. Let's reinstate it. Yep. I agree. More to come. I like it. Good segment. Yep. All right, Corey, bring us to our weekend predictions. What's the damage? All right. So last week, um, Joe and I had the same record again. 
two and three. Mm. Aaron and Jared had the same record. Four and one. Uh, Don't call it a comeback. I haven't updated the totals yet because we are two days too early. But if you let me just sit here and talk. And you knew. For five seconds. Yeah, shout out to you three for moving for me. I'm going to be out of town when we normally record. And these gents are true gentlemen and said they would rather move the pod. And scholars. Then, well... Then me miss. So well, appreciate that. Sure, but I just don't think any of us wanted to host. So yeah, I'm You're doing so a bang up job. Intro. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. nailing it the last couple of years. Last couple, couple years. Of years. Years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a roll, guys. Uh, <laughs> that I foresee the... it being years. That was foreshadowing. Season... To- Stop talking and let me get it through this. I was stalling for you because you didn't. Have I'm your ready job now. Ready. I'm okay. trying to talk. Oh my god! You weren't you weren't doing your job, so I was hosting. <laughs> Are we ready for the season? Today? Give us some stats, stat man. We have a tie now top with Aaron and Joe with forty five points. Mm. Jared with forty two, and Corey with forty. Uh, everything's back in place. We are doing weekend predictions on a Monday. So we don't even have probable pitchers. We could guess, but I didn't put them in there. But we do so, have probable cause. Go ahead. To, to somebody had probable cause to murder the angels. Ooh. Oh, I don't think too that's soon. How it works. Too soon. Um, <laughs> I think that's motive, Corey. <laughs> that's yes. I don't know what probable cause is. <laughs> I'm realizing I'm not good with words. I'm a numbers guy. <laughs> uh, I can tell you about probability. <laughs> probability that the angels are dead. Yes, a hundred percent. Not it's actually. Yeah, it's not a no. Yes question. <laughs> uh, yes, the probability is there. <laughs> yes, there is a probability. Um. Anyway, first series we're going to talk about this week is the Padres at Brewers. Um. Maybe the Padres go and start their winning streak. Mm. I don't think they do. So I'm <laughs> going to take the Brewers. But maybe they do. Maybe the Brewers. The Brewers did uh, good. They they swept the uh, the Rangers this past weekend. I think that's who they played. Again, not good with words. Um, taking the Brewers. Jared. Show me San Diego. Every time you pick the Padres. I think you're a closeted Padres fan. I do like their colors. Yeah. That's you like it. Brown? Yep. <laughs> okay, Joe? Well, I know last week I said I couldn't even name a player on the Brewers. Um, or maybe that was two weeks ago, but I'm, I think it's every I'm looking week. at their team right now. This has this might be the most laughable first place team I've ever seen. So it's, you, it's because you don't know any young players. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I know what numbers are, and they're so low for the hitting. And so, I mean, they're obviously winning on some of their pitchers. But um, San Diego, I'm going San Diego too. I said last week to the team that we're still waiting for that run. So yeah, the run's got to start soon. All right, San Diego. This is, the, this is the last time that I am going to say this team on the pod this year. It is the Los Angeles Angels. Of Why Nets. is this one on here? This is the last time we're going to talk about it because there's not really that many good series this weekend. It's a lot of good teams versus bad teams. So, like the Angels and the Mets are both not good. <laughs> um, I think the Mets are not as bad as the Angels. So I'm going to take the Mets. Um, because they got a first baseman who I really like. He really showed some young kid his place. <laughs> um, go get me a water, kiddo. Taking the bets. Um, I made a choice today before your eulogy, and I have <laughs> to stick with it. And I'm picking the Angels. 
I mean, it's got to stink to fly L.A. to New York, right? That's got to be rough this late in the season. So, well, I mean, I'm sure they're stopping. The Angels. I'm sure, they're stopping somewhere before that. You know, like where are the a... Angels playing this week? Like, if, if they're playing in, they're in Cincy. Okay, so they're going from Cincy to New York. Hmm. Oh no, Cincy's at home. So they got a day off and then at New York. Oh. See, Mets. Okay. I'm going Mets as well. I think both these teams are struggling, but I don't know if you saw the dugout for the Angels. Some coaches were like yelling, trying to wake everybody up and stuff. Angels just look defeated. I think they're done. I don't think Phil Nevin's the right choice there, but that's that's a whole not- a whole other discussion. Um. All right, Yankees at Rays interdivision matchup. The last play- I, I, are they still in last? Who knows. Uh, Yankees bottom of the AL East, Rays top ish of the AL East. Uh, I'm gonna take the Yankees though because I think the Rays they win, but I don't know why. I don't know how. They I I could not name more than five players on the Rays. And the Yankees don't win. I know. So I think that they're gonna win. Eight what game you, losing streak. What do you have against the Rays? I they don't have I don't know who's on their team anymore. <laughs> and they're still won almost eight. And I games. never did. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think they can keep doing it. They they keep getting hurt. Well, I'll tell you Somebody... who they're gonna keep doing it against. They're gonna keep doing it against the Yankees. Okay. Because was... Aaron Boone can't manage. And I said it here first. Man, Phil Nevin, Aaron Boone. Fire. We hate managers. Yeah. See you later. Also, we're available. <laughs> it's a package deal, though. Yeah. You sign one of us, you sign all four of us. Get a groundskeeper, a GM, a coach, and a. Analytics. <laughs> that, that, that guy is great at words. Yep. Just need numbers. When does this words. series start? What day? Friday? It, it, there is a game on Friday because I look up the games on Friday and that's how I pick the series. So it could be Friday, could be Thursday. It's probably one of those two. Yeah, Yankees. That helps. Thanks, Yankees. You're welcome. Tampa. Yankees are bad. Why, though? I told you. Aaron they, really have, they have no healthy starters. Their infield is I'm done's a back. wreck. I mean, who's playing first? LeMahieu playing first. So that means IKFs at third. Who who is on first? Yes, you're correct. And then Volpe still hasn't hit. Jake Bowers starting left fielder. Aaron Judge has done nothing since he came back. And John Carlos Stanton can't run. Literally, that's true. Um, Cardinals at Phillies. I need to run. I'm going to take the Please. Phillies because I like the Phillies. I think the Phillies are playing well, although. I hear there's a guy on the Cardinals that got slided by a Mets first baseman. They call and that a callback, guys. And he's angry. He's yeah, and you wouldn't like him when he's angry. Um, I'm gonna take the Phillies though. I think they're doing well. I okay. am doing myself. something I never thought I would do, and I'm picking Philadelphia. <gasps> I feel like bum, at the beginning bum, of this season, bum. I said the same thing. I would, as long as the Cardinals were on it, I would always pick them. Well, they're trying to lose right now, so I guess I have to go with the Phillies as well. You look awfully smug over there, Aaron. Ah, I was really going to pick the Cardinals this time, but I didn't have a pick yet. I mean, they pitched Drew Rom tonight, who gave up eight and yeah, like two innings. They're not playing good, Phillies. Two, I just don't want to Pirates. vote for the Phillies, but yeah, I gotta go Phillies. All right, and wrapping it up, we have the Rangers of the Twins. Um, that's probably not that much fun of a flight either. Uh, instead of east to west, it's south to north. If we're going to talk about travel plans and factor yeah, that into that, our decision, as we go time through, zone. I'll Google that distance. It's got to be not even close. Uh, you, you underestimate how big Texas is. Um, I've driven through it. You get to Texas, and it's, it's a 18 hour drive and you get to Texas and you're only halfway to where you're going. Where does Texas um, play at? What city? Dallas. Fort Worth. Oh, Arlington. Arlington. Okay. Why you just think three towns? Arlington. It's all the same. Arlington to St. Paul. 
or is the stadium in Minneapolis? I'm not sure which town the stadium's in. Where's Arlington? I bet it's right next to Dallas. I bet they fly out of Dallas, Fort Worth. I'll tell you that. DFW. Um, anyway, I'm going to take the Rangers just because I think the Twins play in the AL Central and it's a trash division and they can't win any games that aren't against the AL Central, also. One's 900 miles and one's 2,700. And one Texas crosses is, three Texas time zone, big. one doesn't. But who's to say which is which? I Texas don't know. is not Alaska, Corey. What? Alaska is big. Texas is not. And Texas is, is also very big. Um, but I'm yeah, also... a lot of our Texas fans. I'm picking the Walker Texas Rangers. Are you saying that Walker Wheeler's going to go play for the Rangers next year? No, he's Chuck saying Norris, that Chuck Norris. <laughs> I know. I understand. <laughs> Thanks. In the eyes Joe? of the Ranger. The unsuspecting stranger. Um, the eyes of the Ranger, the ranger are, upon are upon We've you. said that. We've sang this song at least 15 <laughs> times in this part. You're welcome. Well, it's, <laughs> that's why we're not getting money, because we get copyright infringements on us. No, fifteen under fifteen seconds, you're good. As of right now, we owe twenty eight thousand dollars to uh, Sony <laughs> Music. <laughs> um, you well, know another team that's in first that I don't understand how, because the actual team that should be in first by fifteen games is not. <laughs> um, I'm stalling to do a little looky look. Yeah, well, we know, we're aware. Keep keep <laughs> riffing. Um, Texas. I'm glad we went through all that. <laughs> I'm going with Twins. I actually like the Twins team. They probably oh, really? would have been my second behind the White Sox, which obviously I know what I'm doing because I picked the White Sox to win the Central. But Kid Kaiki, man, he's dominating. He pitched today, so he'll be back up in this next weekend rotation. I think, I think Cooney just waited for us to pick so he could pick opposite. No, I'm, I'm going Minnesota. I've been down on the Rangers for like a month. I've said the Rangers are about to fall. Name and, 25 uh, players on the Twins. On the Twins? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first base, Joey Gallo. Second base, you Edward Julian. Jorge Polanco. Shortstop, Correa. Royce Lewis. Third base. He's lo- he's literally looking at the screen. No, I'm not. Let's I can share my TV. screen right now. Share screen. No, we don't. Can we just... we? Nobody there. else wants to hear this. There. Um... He has two Boom. screens open. Yep, pulled it up right there. Buxton. Got it. I got I got OTP on my other one. Zoom. Buxton, but I think he's hurt. Karoloff, is he up? Ooh, Kepler. No, no. Let's just take a look at that beauty in your browser. What, am I what a beautiful man. What a beautiful man. What am I oh, now it changed. It changed. There's oh, the picture. A, a beautiful it? man in that picture. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, Pablo Lopez. Kid Kyle. All what? right, everybody, don't forget okay. to. When you don't All right, me, guys. Nobody well, else so... cares about you naming 25 players on the They tens. both challenged me, so. Yeah, and you got to seven. I was at 10. Corey started crying. I win. <laughs> All righty, so our no weekend prediction contest is tightening up. Corey somehow snuck back in, even though he's in charge of the stats. So might be some uh, trash band. Trash can banging over there, but we'll see. Banging on um, a trash can. Strumming on a street light. Yes. Name that show, guys. Bet you can't. Uh-uh, idiots. Dummies. Doug. Do, 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 do. You got it. Nice. Well done. All righty, guys. Jeez. Well, thanks, guys. All you rakers. This episode's going to drop early. It's going to be a surprise for you because I know you're all subscribing. So you're going to get that notification on your phone as soon as it drops. Uh, but don't forget to uh, subscribe, comment, like, join the fun. Um, follow us on Twitter and YouTube. Yeah. Join and the Rakers. We got a social media storm to reinstate. That's right. Going up. And, and read the uh, summaries. Wherever you I always ask you questions. And I, I haven't been getting any responses. And I'd really like to know the answers to some of those questions. Oh, and if you all, if you listeners could see Corey's face right now and how. He's wiping the tears away. Lonely puppy, he's looking. You would definitely comment. Well, I, the thing is, is I don't think you guys read it, so you have no idea what I'm talking nope. about. Nope. I copy no. and paste them. I copy and paste them. <laughs> I trust what's in them is right. Well, you, oh yeah. We'll we'll talk about this after the pod, then, guys. <laughs> hey, I'm too busy Jeez. editing.
that's that's up for you. All righty. Right, so until next time, don't forget to rank. Break, break your position. Yo, break it. Break position. Break your position. Break it. Uh, post on the third. That's why Spencer Strider changed his name to or his number to 99. I love him. His favorite movie. Spencer Strider 99.